back again. Uh, today, I thought I would give uh, give a look at the workings of some of the old box cameras. Uh, I have here uh, an old Kodak Brownie, and this is an Ansco. I've already taken the face off of this one. This was a, a donor camera for another ANSCO that I have that's identical to it. I just wanted to show everybody uh, how these mechanisms work and why they still work um, 100 plus years after they were built. <clears throat> You'll see here is a very simple shutter and this is your shutter release here and by tripping that all it does is make that shutter flip back and forth. It's got a spring here, it's got a pivot point here, and that's all it does. It's got a wood backing, and an exposure is made each time the shutter level lever is switched. And you'll see this one has all the typical features of a camera of its time also has a provision for uh, long exposures and that's a little tab on the top. Once that's pulled up you would flick the uh, shutter release and it holds open the shutter and it will stay that way uh, until the shutter is re-released. So let's have a look at the apertures. That is on right on the side here is another tab. If you pull that out, that's the that's the largest aperture right there. It has three. There's the second, a little smaller, and the third smaller still. These would have come with instructions on how to use uh, each one. This one would have been for, I would imagine, a, certainly a bright sunny day. This one a little less bright, but probably still sunny. And this one for perhaps an overcast day. Um, read into that, whatever you like. And still, I don't know exactly how old this camera is, but it was built uh, an amazingly long time ago. Uh, and still functions today. It had a mirror in it for viewing and composing. The mirror itself is gone. And I've replaced... Uh, several of these in some of my other working cameras and I have used um, bits of, of mirror from I'm not exactly sure what you'd call them but but cheap uh, full-length mirrors like you might find at Walmart that have very very thin uh, mirrors in them and that's how I replace those uh, but that's all I wanted to show you with, with this one. And these are all similar. These are all very, very similar. Uh, very similar, similar, simple mechanisms. There is a glass lens in there. And I'll show you. On this one, you would pull this mechanism back here. And if this thing were in proper condition, this would just flip back. But it's broken away. This is a, that's why this one is a donor camera. And then you would pull up on the winding D-ring and you can pull back and remove the guts. And I want to really want you to take a look at this. This the the innards of this camera aren't just put together at a factory. It's almost like a work of art. It's beautifully made. It's got exceptional wood. Uh, I don't know, I'm not an expert enough at uh, wood to know, but I would say this might be poplar and it's exquisitely made. It's got a beautiful finish that's still in good shape today. It's It's got uh, metal springs to hold the spools in. This one takes 101 film, which is an obsolete film. Uh, it's got rollers for the film roll on as it's pulled from one spool around the back and to the take up spool and this is your glass lens. Um, now you can clean those 
they look as though that they're threaded into. I'm not sure that in this case I would unthread this one because this might be threaded right into the wood. Uh, and I can't see a clear enough picture to know if there's perhaps a threaded insert in there or not. It really doesn't matter. It's very easy to clean from here. Uh, I've done this several times, um, usually on the inside and outside. I'll use a Q-tip with a little bit of just Windex and clean them up that way. And it seems to work pretty well. But I just want wanted to show that because that is just beautiful. That is absolutely superbly made. And uh, took big spools. I don't have one down here to show you, but they were, they were big. And uh, the, the negatives, these look to be, I don't know, give or take three inches square, maybe perhaps three and a half. They're amazing feet. <clears throat> One thing with these, when you're taking out or putting back in your guts, you want to make sure it's lined up properly and you want to make sure and pull up that ring. Because if you don't, the other end inside of this thing is going to drag across that wood and tear it up. So that is the story with this. I'm going to show you uh, how similar Kodaks are. This is a Kodak, uh, I don't remember exactly what model it is. Let me see if I can find it. This is a Kodak number 2A. And there you see the inner workings of those again. You have rollers with a film to travel on. This makes uh, a two and a half by I'll say four and a half inch image. Uh, that's just a guess. This again took a, I'm not sure what film this one take. You might be able to get away with 120, although it doesn't, it looks a little big for 120. In any case, uh, it's very similar. All of these were more or less the same. If you get one, you've basically <clears throat> gotten them all because there were very few differences between cameras of this style in this price range. Now this one just happens to be the type where you can pull out the whole face just like that stamp tin <clears throat> and covers up a very similar mechanism again it's a spring that just flips back and forth you can see this is the the shutter button and inside this is the spring that makes your shutter flip back and forth and that's all it does these, I've worked on several of these, these will sometimes will get bound up a little bit right here. A drop of oil goes a long way with these. And this one too has a provision for uh, extended long exposures. Let's see if it actually works. There. And it holds that, that shutter open for long exposure until you re push the thing back in. And there you have standard exposure again. It also has, let's see, pull this out, open the shutter. This one also has a tab here for apertures. There's your second, there's your third, smallest of the three, and then back to the largest. And these are all just amazingly simple, beautifully designed cameras for the masses. That's why these are so popular. They were built to be inexpensive and available to anyone. And this also has two two windows, two mirrored windows for composition. One on the side, one on the top, and that would dictate, you know, how your your image was in oriented on the film. And I'm not sure what else to show you. These are just great cameras. If you get one and it doesn't work, um, it's probably something pretty simple. Could be dust, a little bit, little bit of crud, um, maybe it needs a drop of oil. Very little that can go wrong with these. Um, so don't be afraid you know, to gently do some exploratory work. And these two have glass lenses. You can see that down in there. This one happens to be held in by a serrated ring.
and I have also taken some of these completely apart, pulled their bodies right off of the lens board. And they, this one is just nailed in. It's not that hard, although it can be a little hair raising because you have to pull those nails out and that doesn't always work very well but in any case there's there's what makes them work very simple very straightforward uh, nothing complicated just a simple spring uh, I'm not sure what kind of a shutter you'd call out a rotary shutter I suppose and each time that spring flips you get an image so you'd wind up your film uh, there's supposed to be a red red window here you'd wind it until you got the next exposure number trip the shutter take an image and then leave it because if you forget and you try and work it like modern cameras or modern from the 60s uh, flipping it back and forth is going to give you a double exposure so it does have one benefit if you want to do some some custom effects you can do multiple exposures very easily and you can also ruin images by forgetting uh, so remember one flick one image and that is really all I wanted to show you these are these are awesome cameras uh, I, I have several that, I, that I've used over the years uh, and they can surprise you with the quality of their images you get those lenses cleaned up, you get the shutters so they work smoothly and uh, you probably would want to choose very slow film the shutters themselves depending on what source you you, you trust um, these shutters might trip at anywhere from I've heard as much as a sixtieth of a second to as slow as a fifteenth of a second uh, it looks I don't know what I'd call that I would call it maybe a thirtieth of a second. It's, it doesn't matter. You're going to want to work with slow film. Uh, and that's it. Um, until next time, enjoy.